Well, let me ask you about this, because I know you like this one. What is happening here? In here, a group of young people uh, were being arrested and taken to jail for sitting in or sitting down at lunch counters and restaurants in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. It was my very first arrest. During the 60s, I was arrested 40 times. 40 times? 40 times, and since I've been in Congress, another five times. And I'm probably going to get arrested again for something. <laughs> and my philosophy is very simple. When you see something that is not right, not fair, or just, you have to assess something. You have to do, do something. I, I grew up in, in rural Alabama, and I was told over and over again by my mother my grandparents, you know, father, and others don't get in trouble. They would tell me that's the way it is. But Dr. King and Rosa Parks inspired me to get in what I call good trouble, necessary trouble. And that's what I've been doing ever since. And he's been inspired to do it ever since first meeting Dr. King in March 1958 at age 18. Dr. King called you the boy from Troy, I'm told. It is true that he did refer to me as the boy from Troy when I first met him. He said, well, you're the boy from Troy. Well, you John Lewis? And I said, Dr. King, I am John Robert Lewis. But he still called me the boy from Troy. And when he would see me from time to time, he would say, how is the boy from Troy doing? <laughs> he was your mentor. Well, I loved him. And with those lessons, John Lewis became one of the nation's great civil rights leaders. Let me ask you, in this photo, Mississippi, 1966, after the shooting of James Meredith, were you angry? Were you hopeful? Were you a combination of both? Well, you, you have a sense of righteous indignation when something happened, when someone is being violent or trying to hurt another person. 